And we are back for the Loctite USAC Sprint Cars from the Salem Speedway in Southern Indiana. We are ready now. There's Steve Butler hoping to continue his run toward the top of the standings. We'll be right back. Steve Butler is one of the guys that is in that battle for the point lead. Steve Butler, you got some traffic to deal with tonight. What are the chances here? Well, Jim Keek is up on the front row, and Eric Gordon's up there, so they're real fast, and uh, it's going to be tough. We're just going to try to, you know, uh, keep up uh, the first 10 laps or so. Then we're going to try to see if we can pass them. Hopefully we can. If not, uh, you know, made the best man to win. How's your confidence level right now? Well, we've made some changes on the car. We're, we're not quite as confident in it as we normally are, but uh, we did have uh, quick time, so, you know, I think we got a shot. Steve Butler, third in the points and ready to have at it tonight as he heads off to do battle with the guys up front. It's main event time here at Salem Speedway as they start pushing off the field for the 30-lapper for the sprint on the high bank. 40th running of a great race. We'll be right back to bring you the action. If we take a look at uh, Tony Stewart, the young man who made his debut here this evening. He will be the first alternate, but he'll strap up just in case there's a chance he can go out and run. Bob Fry uh, watching from Wickenburg, Arizona this evening. Bob uh, and his wife Judy and Bob in a new mortuary out there, so they're devoting all their attention to the business, and they had to take a sabbatical from racing. We know he's watching. We wish him well. And I was very impressed with young Tony Stewart. Let's get some comments from the youngster. I don't know how much Tony will have to say because he's an alternate here with a shot, perhaps, at making it. Are you aware that one of the guys hadn't fired up yet? You may have a chance to make your first sprint car feature here. How are you feeling? I'm praying for him not to start. <laughs> <laughs> are you nervous? Yeah, I think I'm hoping I get to run just for the track time mainly. I want to get some laps. Want to get some experience, some seat time. What do you think of your first uh, sprint car race here? You really ran pretty well, I thought. Well, when I got in some traffic and got racing with other cars, my confidence went up. You know, I just got to learn the, the limit of the car and the limit of myself right now. Running with some cars helps. Good luck, young man. We're going to get out of the way because I got a feeling he may try to fire this thing up momentarily. Tony Stewart, the alternate, may get a chance in his first ever sprint car race to run the main event tonight. Back up top side. Larry, to underscore, it takes laps, experience, and, and he's getting the laps. He wanted laps here this evening in the feature to get some more experience on the high banks. Well, we said that. Here's again, the fastest six uh, inverted, so uh, inside the front row, Eric Gordon, outside Jimmy Keeker in number 20. In the second row, we have Jeff Blom and Chip Thomas. The third row, with those tied for the quick qualifying times, Chet Phillip and Steve Butler. In row four, on the inside, Robbie Stanley, who leads the point standings. Outside, the newcomer from stock car racing, Randy Sweet. In the fifth row, on the inside, Jim Mahoney. Outside, Bob Sacconi. The sixth row will be shared by Rick Howerton, a winner of a heat race alongside Gene Lee Gibson, another heat race winner. And the seventh row on the inside, Greg Stump. But it may be tough to catch Mr. Keeker in that uh, number 20 V6 Glen Nival car. This is going to be a dynamite race, let me tell you, because there are at least eight or ten cars in here. And we say this every week, but it's true every week. There are eight or ten cars that could win this race, but Keeker is going to be tough starting in the front row. Blaine. I think Jeff Bloom might uh, be a factor here. Jeff Bloom is a pavement specialist. She starts inside the second row. Wally Shear turns him loose, and we are racing at Salem, Indiana. And once again, from the in-car camera, we look back at Chip Thomas in the yellow and red number 24. He's in third position. Out in front is Keeker. There in second is Eric Gordon. That's right. Eric Gordon in that black number six moved right into second. Chip Thomas fell to third in that yellow number 24. And Jeff Bloom, in fact, is in fourth place in that blue number 67 car. Oh, oh come on right here. Three, four, five cars involved. Oh, my gosh. Guys are still getting into it. Well, we can see yeah, Larry, I'd like to ask you more about that whole business of visibility. Give me an idea of what you're using for your landmarks on the racetrack. Where are you actually looking? Where are the driver's eyes focused? Okay, as you're looking down into this corner here, first of all, you don't get that wide a picture. Those slots and those helmets are much narrower than this. So you're only seeing about the top of that cage down to the track. That's all you're seeing in front of you. And you're looking off to the left as far as that camera can see right there. Now you look clear down the racetrack, clear into that next corner and the cars are in front of you. But as you go through here, you're actually looking off out of camera range right here. You're looking farther down the racetrack. And if you're not looking off farther down the racetrack and something happens, you're in big trouble. So you don't get a clear view of the, what the driver's seeing because the driver has to watch much farther around the corner going through there than the, than the camera shows. 
We'll set the pace for the restart. That is Jim Keeker in that V6 Chevrolet, the Parker Machinery car that was built uh, 1978 by Glenn Nibel. We featured that car earlier this evening here on ESPN. Right behind him, Eric Gordon in that uh, black number six. He is second in the point standings currently. Chip Thomas surprised a lot of folks with a good qualifying run as we look once again at Eric in second. And then uh, Chip Thomas rides in the third position in uh, at car number 24. And then third, make that fourth, is uh, the pavement master, and that is Jeff Bloom out of uh, the state of Michigan. Now, uh, once again, he could be a factor here before this race is over. And then a riding in the fifth position, of course, the four-time USAC Sprint Car Champion, Steve Butler. We are about to go green. Oh, there was some tapping out there. Butler got tapped uh, from the rear, and Wally Shear turns them loose. This will be lap number two at Salem. And once again, Keeker is out in front. Eric Gordon rides in second. Yeah, Chip Thomas in third position in that yellow car, and in fourth position is uh, Jeff Bloom, but uh, looks like Steve Butler's already got notions about going around him. And now we ride with Robbie Stanley, and that is uh, in the sixth position. He rides behind Steve Butler, Butler out in front in that white and uh, red number 69, and right in front of Butler is that uh, blue number 67 of Jeff Bloom. Stanley's really trying hard to catch these guys. I thought he'd quick pick up on these guys a little quicker than he has. But he seems to be having a little trouble catching up with Gordon and uh, Bloom right there in front of him. But he's running the race car for all it's worth. And he's going to hunt around. He's going to try to find a little different place in the racetrack where he can run faster. Look at Keeker. He's running a fantastic race. But it looks like Butler is trying to make the big pass right here. He's going there. He goes, gonna, he's going to get around him right there. Once he got up even with him and got a good shot coming off the corner, he was gone. Chet Phillip and Robbie Stanley now catching up with Bloom, and they're both going to try to give him the shot. Well, we said earlier that Robbie was going to watch Steve Butler and learn from the uh, master here at Salem, and perhaps he could learn how to make that pass of Bloom. They work off the second corner down the back stretch. Right there, you saw that Stanley had to get out of the throttle and fall in behind him because a slower car, he couldn't, he couldn't run in there three abreast. He had to fall in behind him going into that corner. Your leader going through traffic as uh, the lapping process has begun down the back stretch. There's the gap uh, off to the left, the yellow number 20. That's the uh, V6 Chevrolet being driven by Jim Keeker. There's the gap back to second position, the black number six, the Molds Unlimited uh, Oscar, and that is uh, Eric Gordon. And there is the battle now for third spot. Jim Thomas in 24 is third, up to fourth is Steve Butler. And fifth now is Robbie Stanley. Yes, Robbie Stanley's on the move. He's moved up to fifth, and he started a long way back. Uh, Butler also is doing a fantastic job. He's working very hard on Chip Thomas. He's going to school right now. He's trying to find the spot, and it looks like he's found the spot. He thinks he can make it. No, he has to fall back. And all the time he's doing this, Stanley's sitting back there behind him and, and paying attention. He's learning. He's going to see what uh, Butler does, and then he's going to try to make the same kind of move. Well, Butler, of course, now third in the point standings. We are riding with the guy who leads the point standings by virtue of his superb showing on paved tracks this season. He's won twice in the high banks of Winchester. I'm speaking, of course, of the youngster from Brownsburg, Indiana, Robbie Stanley. There's a move for position up to third, and that's Butler. He saw that Chip Thomas was getting a little bit loose. He saw him. He's getting a little bit loose every time he got in the corner. He finally dove down under him and just motored on by coming off. So Butler goes to third, and he will set sail for Eric. Gordon, and there is a good battle for the fourth position. Boy, that was close. It's still close. Jeff Bloom has dropped out of the race. Jeff Bloom is behind the pit wall. They go by Bob Seelman on the high side. And now, Robbie looks to the inside, coming off to it. Should have him this time, yes. And here comes Chet Phillip. He's out the yellow. Yeah, it doesn't look like he hit the wall too hard. He probably hit a straight broadside. Going into three, where he's sitting, you go in and you go right up to the fence, right in the middle of the corner, and he probably just got in a little too hard, went up, banged the fence, and banged back off and, uh, and stopped the car. That's the uh, Clarence Miller car that we've talked about a lot about being so old. About 15 laps now and complete, so we still have half the race to go. We are under yellow in the 30-second running of the Joe James Pat O'Connor Memorial Race here at Salem with Keeker leading Gordon, Butler, Stanley, and Thomas will come back and complete this race. To go as Jimmy Keeker picks up the throttle, and as we take a ride with Robbie Stanley, there's the green flag from starter Wally Shear, and we are racing on lap number 16. This is a fantastic shot. Look at these guys moving in and out, trying to find a way around the 
the driver in front of them. You know, Stanley's back here. He's trying to watch the driver in front of him and figure out a way to get around him, but it's very, very tough to do. Very, very fast. Those guys are running about 140, 145 miles an hour at the end of that straightaway. Tough to make quick decisions and make the right ones at that speed. Well, Keeger looks like he's getting some pressure right now from uh, young Eric Gordon. Uh, Eric finished second both in the sprints and the Silver Crown standings last year, and he rides second right now in the point standings. You know, it might be that the yellow flag cooled off Eric Gordon's tire, but if he keeps running down there and slipping the rear end like he did right there, he'll heat it up again, and it'll give Steve Butler the opportunity to go around him. He needs to, he needs to cool it a little bit, try to make a move, but not make uh, too many uh, false ones on the bottom. Keeger continues to lead with Gordon second. Third is a Butler, and they're taking a look to the inside. We are riding with Robbie Stanley, who presently leads the point standings by some 42 markers over Eric. So once again, the top three in points are in the top four positions right now with the first place riding in fourth. Second place is second. Oh, look at him smoke that right rear. And third place is third. And they're driving the wheels off those race cars right now. Believe me, they're all working the very hardest they possibly can to try to find a spot to get around the driver in front of them. But every one of them is going so fast, it's hard to gain that advantage. There goes right on the high side. Oh, and Gordon slipped up in front of him. But Gordon is working low again. Oh, he's sliding across the front. He is going in way too low. That's not the groove down there. Well, it shouldn't be, but he hit that oil dry on all that liquid down there, and he really slid up in front of him. Look at, at uh, Butler. He goes way high, trying to get a big, long run on him down the straightaway, but he just can't gain enough momentum or enough speed down the straightaway to get around him. It looks like Keeker is getting loose, though. Keeker in that yellow car is getting awfully, awfully loose, much looser than he was earlier. Look at it, loose! Oh, man! All four of them right together, a new leader! Oh. Eric Garden takes the lead, here comes Butler! And now he's still sliding, he is dirt tracking through the he's corner. The tire, the left rear tire is blue on that thing, right in front of Stanley. Right as they came by there, the left rear he's tire. He's trying to control it down the front straightaway, you're right, Larry, and he will make it off the track, so the green remains out. Oh, a heartbreaker for Jimmy Keeker, who had been leading, but the lead now belongs to Eric Gordon. We are going to have a shootout over the final few laps here in Salem. Boy, those guys did a fantastic job missing him. That tire was going down for three or four laps. It kept getting looser and looser and looser, and finally it just blew up, and Robbie Stanley was right behind him. Boy, how he missed him, I'll never know. Five laps to go. I think we're completing lap number 25. Five laps to go, and here comes the battle for the lead. He couldn't do it. He tried to get back under him. As close as they're, they're running, I tell you, they may take each other out. We may have the winner coming from the third spot right now. In the traffic. Oh, oh look at that. That's a Cody. That was so close. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, he was loose. Uh, you could feel that from up here. We're not even the cockpit. He was real loose coming off the second corner. He was so close that I've never seen anybody run that close to the inside fence coming off of two here. That's extreme. That's that successfully come off. That racetrack is dead flat down there where he was at. I don't know how he did it. Well, now that he has the lead with three laps to go, Butler, the four-time champion, going for his fifth USAC sprint car title, begins to open up the gap. He may have conserved his right rear tire, the best of all of them. Exactly, and Robbie uh, Stanley, or not Robbie Stanley, but Eric Gordon has heated up his right rear. He's very loose at this point. He doesn't have a prayer of catching uh, Butler at this point. He's going to hang on and hope he can finish in second place. There's the white flag. One lap to go for Kokomo, Indiana's Steve Butler. And Butler, who had terrible luck early this season with mechanical problem, is beginning to put it all together through the midsection of the season, and he is certainly making a run toward his fifth national title. He will take the checkered flag, dual checkered flags. Wally Shear, Eric Gordon will hang on for second. Third is Robbie Stanley. And Chip Phillip was fourth. He did a great job coming up through there. We didn't see him much, but he was driving the wheels off of that race car, too. Boy, we just did get this race in. Well, I, I tell you, the time allotted. These, these guys were driving their hearts out. Look right here. Stanley's trying to get underneath Keeker. He's loose up there. And just as he gets right up to him, bam, the left rear blows. Look at that thing. Oh, man, he was so lucky to miss him. It's unbelievable. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. It just kept getting flatter and flatter. How he missed him. You know, because he's clear down. He's almost to the inside fence right there again, trying to get around him. Great. Well, the crowd uh, with some uh, positive reaction for both the driving of Jim Keeker and also for uh, Steve Butler. Dave Despain, your comments. 
One word, spectacular. I'll tell you what, man, that was some kind of an automobile race. At the top of the show, we said, keep an eye on Steve Butler. He's coming on hard. He really came on tonight to win this thing in a spectacular fashion as the shredded tire sent Keeker to the sideline, and you saw the onboard shot. It was truly a magnificent night here at Salem Speedway. The results show Bob Saccone coming from the back to finish sixth. There's the rest of the top ten for Gary Lee and Larry Rice. We say so long with a big congratulations to Steve Butler. See you next week.